guys welcome back to magic tv my name's craig it's nine o'clock it's time for another video and today i am just chatting to the two biggest names in magic right now the entire industry is talking about these two men because not only have they created stuff over the years that is just phenomenal but they have now teamed up for the first time ever officially on a product that has become the fastest selling trick in the entire history of Murphy's Magic, it's broken sales records. It's done incredibly well. And like dealers just can't get it quick enough. It doesn't stay on the shelf. Uh, it's, it's just blowing all sales records away. I can't wait to talk to them about this. It is, of course, the legend that is Javier Fuenmayer and Lloyd Barnes. How are you guys doing? <laughs> doing great. How are you? I'm excited. I'm excited, guys. This is this what is an introduction. Just... I want yeah, to every time I leave the house and walk into like the cafe. It's not, not the magic cafe. It'd be like a, a, a store or a shop yeah, okay. anyway. You know, like a cafe where people are nice to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um... like crotch photos. <laughs> yeah, crotch gate. <laughs> <laughs> Only in the magic community could you have an online forum requesting to have multiple pictures of Lloyd Barnes' crotch over and over again. I, and I posted four. Yeah. And to specifically see the bulge in the pants. They want to see how big that bulge is. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> and then eventually I, I, I followed all the, 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 he wanted, he had like four things that he wanted specifically, like t-shirt lifted up, stood back from a low angle for something. So I posted that exact photo to show that there's like, like it's invisible. And then he came back. And at this point I stopped responding, but he came back and said, well, he's got the he's got the decks in sideways that time, and I was yeah. like, I, up. I think he's just trolling me because I yeah. I was this close to taking a picture in in I'm not even joking. I was gonna get <laughs> a pair of Haley's like tights. I'm I'm not kidding, right? I was gonna put them on, and I was gonna I was gonna get some like white pants, like white fronts, and just like have one like part of me hanging out, but just about visible, and then decks to the side. I would just, I think that's what he wanted. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. I think he was just seeing how far he could push you. But other than a couple of people, <laughs> the, the the feedback on this has been phenomenal. You know, already reviews are hitting the market. You had uh, Alex Alejandro, who is raving about it. Uh, BMW guy in the cafe, obviously. You've got uh, Magic Orthodoxy, who's raving about it. Everybody is going crazy. I have questions. And the yeah. first question, I want to know how you guys came together on this. Because for people that don't know, you have, and you, Lloyd, you work together on uh, lots of projects because you work together in the in, in the studio department at Murphy's. So you will collaborate on dozens of projects. Uh, and but this is, and you've bought stuff out in the past, of lots of things, Lloyd, you know, you've got Lux, you've got tons of stuff. And you as well have, you know, one of the biggest hits of a couple of years ago, Nexus Wallet was all you. What made this the project that you two decided to kind of go, you know what, this is the one where we have to kind of share equal billing. Where, what made this that project? Like, where did this all come from? And how was it that it was like, you know, because if, if Lloyd created it and said, have, can I have help with this? It would be a Lloyd project. The other way around, it would be, it would be your project, have. What made you guys decide to come together and team up on this one? Well, I mean, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say this: the way I see it, this could not exist without Lloyd, and he's told me the same thing about me. So, I, but I'll let him. I'll let him take it after me. Um, I personally kind of needed Lloyd throughout all the little steps, you know, to get that reassurance. If, if he doesn't show me, and I'm sure he'll talk about it, that little drawing that he did, I wouldn't have been able to do anything because I didn't really think about it. Um, I think it was when I took that little drawing and I brought him like the first idea. That's when he said, I think we should work on this together. Am I, am I remembering right, Lloyd? Yeah, pretty, pretty much like basically what what have you interpreted from my drawing was so much better and advanced than where I'd even thought. And this is actually kind of similar to the drawing that I was trying to show this to someone the other day. That's kind of along the same lines of a drawing of what I sent to have, like that basic. And I was like, 
all all I had in my head was just 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 how to lay cards out so that you could touch the values. Any value immediately. Kind of like you know an abacus. Imagine you wanted to count to four with an abacus, you'd have to go one, two, three, four. But with a keyboard, you just press four or seven, mm -hmm. right? That's just the basically the, the just the, the seed that I had. So I was like, oh, I have. I think if you set cards out like this, maybe it could be used as an index. And mm -hmm. that text message was like that long. And then Javier took that and turned it into what you see in the in the in the tutorial as like one of the first iterations of deck. So it was kind of like me drawing two circles, a line, and saying, I have an idea for a mode of transport, and Javier then coming back with a bicycle, and by the end of it, ends up as a Tesla. So really, I don't, <laughs> this is why it's a joint project, because I really, like, apart from, like, the tutorial and the tweaking back and forth, I really did just send him something which he took and interpreted, interpreted so much into a, a a real thing that there's wow. no way that I could even I I you know I, I say to him all the time like this, this is this is more like 80 20 <laughs> <laughs> you know like he really is the the genie fan and the reason I showed it to have is um I don't have like I, I'm an ideas person so I'll write like ideas sporadically we have as you can tell from his YouTube is an incredible creator but have pays attention to the little details and stuff, like the little details. Mm. And I don't, I don't have that ability. Like, and so, so I knew have was the person that if, if there was anything worthwhile exploring in the, in the, in, in the blueprint, <laughs> <laughs> then it would be have that could go, you know, you know, have you seen those pictures that, that kids draw of, of animals when they're like four and, or monsters and they just, it's just this. And then yeah. like when those AI professional Photoshop artists turned into a scene <laughs> from Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. think of that. I'm the four-year-old, Javi is the artist. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> That's awesome. And and is it true? Is it true that like you and I, there's a reason I want to ask you this? So is it true that you had a design, you were perfectly happy with it, everything was going well, and then you literally just started again from scratch because of an improvement. Because one of the things that the community does a lot of these days is they moan about stuff that's been rushed to market. Oh, this hasn't been tested, that hasn't been rushed to market. And 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 this story that I've heard about, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, we could we could put that out and and everybody would I'm sure like it because it was it was great. But we want to put the best possible products out. We can, so we're going to scratch this. That's the perfect example of like going above and beyond to make sure that the the, the thing that you're bringing to market is the best it can be. You know, is that true? Did you like literally start again? This is all uh, hard. So, yeah, we technically started off again a couple times, uh, not just one time. So, it, it's it technically could be this one could be considered Dex 2.0 or possibly even Dex 3.0. But if there was a way that we could improve it at that moment in time, we both decided it would be much better to have that improvement rather than like, okay, like you said, let's just rush this out, put it out, knowing that we're already going to do another one later. We much rather just let's skip that and get to, the, to that next version first. Um, it's going to be better for us. We're going to feel a million times better putting something out that we 100% are behind presently in time, not like, oh, okay, we were behind that version back then. It's still good. Let's put that out. Let's make some money with that. And then let's put this out. I mean, at least that doesn't flow with me. And I know Lloyd also wouldn't be cool with that. So for those reasons, we were like, no, let's, let's actually go with what we think it's best, even if it means starting from scratch. Wow. Let me tell you the story about this as well. Um, right. This is how close we were to, to this. <clears throat> we had, I had announced on my YouTube channel that we were, I think, three months away from release because when something goes into manufacturing, it's 90 days, normally like uh, a month and a half to produce, a month and a half to ship and distribute. So it was comfortable three months from the July or the June that I uploaded the video, because at that point in the video, we were using Dex 
1.0. Uh, we were so close that I'd announced the loose release date, which would normally bang on, but we'd also paid for it. So we paid yeah. to have this made. And something happened. Have you had a call with someone? And without getting into the specifics of the call, after it, he called me and he was like, this person does not like Dex at all. And, you know, for whatever reason, they, they, talk, they talk trash on it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? And that happened a few days before. And because we, the thing is, it, was, it worked. And it was what we, it was the one in the YouTube video that started all this. So it's, it is as it was there. And I, I, I remember you were just like sending me like, oh, I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about that. And I remember got, I got a, a, a two messages overnight. One of them was that uh, it was early morning in the place where they make decks. And I think it'd be, it was like 11 a.m. for them. And Javier had sent me a message late just before them. But for me, it was the middle of the night. So I woke up to two messages. One was saying, can you confirm the molds? So basically, when you, when you manufacture something, you pay the money and everything, and then you get one final confirmation, which is like the signature to say, go. The one message said, can you confirm the molds? Which meant literally, and that was 11 in that, that meant literally, when I, when I press yes, they press begin. Like that, that direct. I read that message, I like rubbed my eyes. I seen another message from Hab and was like, dude, I've just completely re remade decks using this material and it's gone from this thick, which was the size of, I think it was six millimeters thicker than a deck of cards. Or if actually the case, it was the same width as a box then. You think it's gone from this width to this width, like paper thin, because without the cards in it, right? Um, and I read that message. And I was like, oh my God, uh, so uh, so I said no I, I don't don't produce this and then I had to wait because I woke up about 7 a.m I had to wait till about four in the afternoon my time for Javier to wake up to say uh, yeah. I, is this is this actually better because I've just stopped production and we have people going crazy for it and then he developed it and he's like yeah dude this is way better I mean I'm making it all by hand literally by hand but it feels more flexible it's lightweight it's far skinnier da 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 so we had to make the tough call. I just announced to, at the time, like 50,000 people that, that Dex was being released in three months. And we didn't even know, all we knew was the process that Javier made it with by hand. We hadn't even decided on material uh, 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 and all the fine details, like every fine details. At one point, there was staples involved. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we had to start. So then we started from scratch then. So we'd act. So yeah, dude, that was like, that was legit, legitimately it. Wow. That's mad. And I want to ask you about the project. I want to ask you about Dex. But before I do, one other question. What made you guys decide to fly over to Miami? I mean, to, to film this whole thing? Because that's like a big deal. Like for two reasons. One, getting Lloyd out of Port Call is just, <laughs> you know, like an achievement in its own right. But then two, the expense of having to fly, you know, because you're over in the uh, West Coast. Huh? Yeah. Getting you over to the East Coast, getting Lloyd over to the East Coast, going there for a week, accommodation, film crews, food, everything. It's not a cheap thing to do where, you know, you can send Lloyd down to, you know, smoke and mirrors and, you know, it, it didn't need to be done that way. So what, what was the purpose behind behind going all the way to Miami? Do you want to tell Again, that? have things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, kind of, a little bit. I had, I had brought it up to Lloyd that I think it, we could get crazy reactions from Florida. I remember I, remember I, I worked in Florida doing magic like as my main income, just getting tips from people on the streets. So I'm pretty confident that any day of the week, at any time, I was going to be able to get really good reactions. Um, on top of that, I'm not super familiar with the locations around here, but I'm very familiar with the locations in Florida because I grew up there. So any sort of venue, any sort of look that we needed or that 
Lloyd would have wanted to film at, I would have been able to instantly say, okay, let's go there. Let's go here. Let's go over there. Um, so for me, that was kind of, kind of the reason I, I felt really confident with being able to just jazz it up over there at any time of the day, any day. That way we weren't almost like locked into, we only have, let's say Friday or Saturday to go film and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to almost have the freedom to go film on Monday morning or Tuesday night. And then, and then that's literally what we did. And uh, we had to make the call almost to say like, oh, okay, well that's enough <laughs> live performance. Let's just continue to film um, instructions. And also, there's also another another reason that was also important, and that one was Lloyd's reason. So you can talk well, about. Yeah, it. I was going to come over to California um, and hang out with Murphy's at the Murphy's Warehouse and things, and then go to Magic Live from there and do like a whole two week thing. Um, but I'm just too old, and <laughs> I, well, I got a family. You know, I got a, I got a little baby, or not little. He's two, but he's my little baby. And I've done it. Like I'd be not, not, you know, I've done enough. Everyone knows that I've, I've done enough. And I thought like to get to Rancho Cord Cordoba is quite a tricky place to get to from the UK for where I am, from my am in Wales. And it, it the, the trip to get there is uh, just shy from door to door, 27 hours. Wow. Um, and it's that to get there and then that to get home plus two weeks away and I was like, you know what? I could probably we could probably get the same sort of thing. Like, I, I I don't know. I, I just I'm just and I've got to, I've developed this really weird phobia of flying as well. It's the strangest thing. And so that's for another that's another day story. So <laughs> with my phobia of flying plus that plus I didn't want to be away for that long. Um, because I've done those trips where it's 27 hours and then even like two days later you're still not in the zone after mm. that because you also jet lag too and the time zones are different. So it's just ah. I, like, I don't want to do that so uh anyway so then it so that was all sort of i was like guys let's just let's just do it i'll film my stuff here have film over there and then at like the 11th hour i was like what about we just go back to plan one which is miami and i looked at the flights i was like oh, dude that like nine hours to miami mm -hmm. direct let's do that and the interesting thing about this is that i i we had some incredible experiences because of miami I've been everywhere, well, the trailer, right? The trailer. Anyone who's seen the trailer, look, it 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 is incredible. Everyone knows, right? You like the UK. I know some artists refuse to film in the UK for trailers. Like literally, I can name one in recent times that actually wouldn't fly here because the reactions in the UK, people think you're playing a prank, so they clam up. Um, the the easiest place in the world to get reactions is somewhere like New York, right? That's just generally a great place. But something unique happened in Miami, which I've never seen before, is a. Uh, we normally, you know this, Craig, when you go out filming with any company, say Penguin, how long will you be out filming live performances until you get like the golden performance? Yeah, you, you're out all night. You get, you get multiple, but the more performances you get, the better you are, the better chance you have of like putting together a decent trailer. How many tables do you have to approach as well, would you say, before getting the... Lots. You're right. Miami. Yeah, I've been everywhere, man. You can see it in the trailer. You can see it in the live performances. We accounted, I think we put three days aside initially for live performances. We went out day one. Was it day one half? It was yeah. day one. We got approached. We we got approached to show them magic. Not not us approaching them, saying, can we show you magic? We walk in the strip, have I say we, Javier. The people went to Javier to ask him to show the magic, but not once or three separate times. Three times back to back. We finished one performance. He walked off. They heard the reaction from somewhere else. They called him over without even resetting decks three times, formed it. We spent a couple of hours, if that, in on a, in 35 degree heat, sweat trickling down us. All our cars were mushed together. Three hours, done. We didn't, we, we did just for the sake of it, get extra performances because we like kind of had yeah. to do our due diligence. I've never had that before. I've never had that where the people approach you. I think partially because it was Javier's place, but also you can do card tricks. You can do magic tricks, right? Things that like a cans are probability based or stuff that involves like mathematical principles. But when you have tricks like an invisible deck, 
you know, with an invisible deck, right? We don't want to admit this. No magician does. But there's always something, even if the the, the, the audience are too polite, there's always something nagging at the back of their head to look at the cards, right? Or a trick like that. It's kind of like, it reminds me of this. You know the whole jack-in-the-box thing? All you want to do is finish that song. It's kind of the same when people are polite and they don't want to snatch the cards out of your hand. Well, imagine now the reactions from people when you do something like an invisible deck and most people are left unsatisfied because they think they, you know, they don't know how it works, but they, they something's up. And then suddenly you give them the deck and now any idea of this potentially being a trick goes and evaporates. And they actually think they've just seen a real piece of magic. Reactions, crazy. That sound you see that. You spreads see that. and people hear that and then they start saying, why, what, what's that? that that's different. That, those are, those people are reacting to something different to normal. Yeah, you see so that in the trailer, bad. don't you? You see the lady with the dog that's just like <laughs> deck off yeah. you immediately. She's like, just give me that yeah. deck. I want to look at it. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, my guess is maybe somebody had done a similar trick to her before and maybe they showed it and she's like, what's up? Because she kept like slapping it, looking through it, turning it over. When I try to grab it, she's like, no. <laughs> She even oh. bit the card, but I, but I do think oh, yeah, there she is the card. <laughs> mad. But the, I, I honestly think that like John Costafero talks about this, making your tricks one degree better, one yeah. degree can change everything. But I, I think uh, in terms of just look, well, maybe just exactly what he's talking about, but there is a one degree difference between somebody reacting and being blown away, but having a nagging feeling like that, just a scratch. Uh, itch that they want to scratch they may not even be able to put their finger on it until a week later and they go oh maybe i could i wish i could have looked at those cards but just something unanswered sometimes very very deep down subconsciously there's a one degree difference between that and having that itch scratched and yeah. the, i think the difference is the reactions in the trailer and that's why people were stopping us because humans are the, are the uh, we have an amazing instinct as humans that we could, I learned this when I was doing 3D animation at university. We can tell someone, uh, we can recognize someone from a distance from the silhouette of their walk, the, the gait, as they call it. Because humans can recognize other, other animals and other humans. And, and it's why in CG animation, we'll, it's, it's almost impossible to fool the human eye with a CG model of an animal or a human because the way they move is just it, it ingrained into our thinking. And... I think the same can be said for reactions that are, well done, I have no idea how you did that to somebody who's like, did I just, what, did, would that just, did I just see real magic? Like there's that difference that we can just intrinsically pick up on. It's why like when you watch like a documentary versus like a dramatized documentary, you can, you'll never find an actor that can actually give a real raw performance of somebody just being themselves. And it's the difference between polite reactions and people witnessing mm. what they think is magic and i honestly really and i know maybe i'm just like i'm just going on a bit of a, a wild one here but i really do think that's why people were stopping him back to back to back to say what did they just see yeah you I know because i've yeah. never had that before and it's only oh. with things like where there's no explanation that you can get reactions like that it's insane it really is and you see that on the trailer as well and and i want to talk to you about the tutorial in a second because i know the real goal in this project is tutorial but let's just put a pin in that for a minute, just for a second, and let's do real talk about decks. There's lots of there's lots of indexes out there. For many years, most people kind of went with the advocate, right? That was that was kind of the go-to. Then a couple of years ago, we had the cheetah come out, and there's been a bunch of indexes that have been released over the years. Um, this is being said, and and not only by you guys, not only by Murphy's, but everyone who's seen this is saying. This is the best index of all time. So aside for the tutorial, they'll just come back at me and say, well, well, look at all the stuff you can do with it. I, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But just purely from the index point of view, what makes this the best index of all time? I don't think it is. Uh, what? Uh, I don't think it's the best index. It's the best index for me and Javier because it's tailor-made to people who have the same needs that we do. But if you're on stage and the trick that you're performing requires you to have an index in your jacket pocket, because as you put the pen away is when you've been making that steal for the last 10 years for your finale effect, 
that index is the best for them. So I can tell you why it's the why why we love Dex. Yeah. But like oh, I wouldn't yeah. make the claim that it's the best of all time because somebody might not even want to put it in their pocket. Okay. Okay. So why is it the best for you? You wanna go up? I, I mean I can I can tell you why I love it. Um what I wear, it fits perfectly for that. So I tend to use either shorts or pants or jeans that are not really that loose. So they're somewhat tight or skinny jeans. Sometimes I tend to wear that. And Dex just works perfectly for what I wear. On top of that, it doesn't feel bulky for me. It's very, very, very easy and intuitive. Uh, maybe because I've practiced it a lot, but you can just name a card and I can immediately visualize it in Dex in my head. Like my hand just naturally goes to get it. And I also like that I love cop. It's one of my favorite palms to use, cop. So it naturally delivers the card into cop. But at the same time, if I want to have it into classic palm, I can do that too. And I like that every single card is also organized in the same way so that it comes out exactly the same. And because it's in one pocket, um, I've used things that use two pockets. And for me, it's a little bit difficult because if they name one card, I have to do things one way. If they name another card, I have to adjust things to fit a different way. But with this, everything comes always exactly the same. So I can actually focus on whatever it is that is happening, knowing that every single time the load will happen like this or the steel will happen exactly the same. Um, so I love the consistency of Dex. We also and, made a version which was two pockets as a prototype. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, and it was going to attach magnetically together. So if you wanted to, you, have both, you yeah. would have it. Yeah, but we decided, well, that's going to make it slightly larger and we're never really going to split it. So it might as well go with what we would like to use and, and, and perform. Um, let's see, I don't know. There's so much to like about what you For yeah. me, it's like the extra touches. So first of all, like I sort of, my, my, my jumping off point was Madison's Advocate because it's just incredible. Like if you've ever used Madison's Advocate, it's incredible. It is, it's he built an entire index out of a, a single deck of cards. All you need, you can make it anytime, anywhere. And if I ever found myself in a bind, I'd go back to the advocate. Um, mm. But there was that was like twenty years ago, and like everything advances in twenty years. And um, and so so over the over the time of me using it, there was just a few things that just personally I'm not as good at as other people. And the one thing that I'm not as proficient at um, is 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 the counting element of finding the value. So the big thing that started for me with why I want a, an index that's perfect for me and have is that I didn't want to have to count. And what we found is when we removed the counting element, uh, it, it A, made it quicker, but the speed is really not important because it doesn't matter because you have to wait for the appropriate misdirection to take your hand out the pocket, even if you have it instantly. But what we found it allowed us to perform better. There's nothing worse than yeah, have you ever seen like people do like a like, you know as he wins a can it, he's incredible at it but some it's complicated not complicated math but it's tricky maths to do when you're performing most magicians who are not as he wins when they perform mm -hmm. and someone names the card and the number they do this okay and is that a fair choice do you want to change your mind and they're back in the room and that's what I found myself doing uh, which I didn't want to do so when you now don't have that element in like in the context of an ACAN, no maths, in the context of this, no counting, by removing that, suddenly I could say, name a card, Craig, and just completely be engaged with you and the rest of my audience. That, so that was the key thing. And then the other things, which are the, like, the, 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 again, Javier's design of this teardrop element with rounded corners, which meant that it, it's, its silhouette alone looks like a wallet, just a hip pocket wallet. So even though people are not looking at your pockets, and if they are, you're doing something wrong, but even just like the fact of camouflaging the design of the index itself, so that even if somebody was just staring at your bulge, first of all, it's such a weird thing for lay people to think is a deck card in your pocket. And that's why yeah. you're adding, like, it's, like those two things don't align. They just, it's very, it's very off kilter thinking, but even just to cover that, 
for that one in a million or thousand, 10,000 uh, spectators that might think you're doing it, especially if you do a just straight card from Pocket Machine, which you should never do, that um, just to design it to look like a wallet, so that's for skinny fit jeans. I think that like that stuff is just the the extra icing on the cake. It's like it's cover on top of cover, like layering the, the method so much. Like even like the design for it in the pocket is a layered method. Um, and then the things like the ease of use again, like how you said, one pocket yeah. was essential for us. Um, and the thing is, some people don't care about taking their pockets. I'm an ED, I'm a real EDC performer. I take my phone. I don't even have a wallet. Phone. Um, I don't half time. I don't even take a deck. I'll borrow things. So it has to be. I, I, pocket is is proper real estate space for me. High value. Um, so I can't <laughs> use anything more than one. Yeah. yeah. What one other thing I would want I want to say is, I like what Lloyd says that you get to the card very quickly, even though you don't need to get it. And once you have decks, this will make sense, but you'll know whether you have the right card or not. Um, especially when you're waiting in there, when you're at the spot, the way there's tactile things in there that will make it so that you're very confident as to which card it is that you have, whether you have the right value and the right suit. There's many little tiny things in decks that are working together to give you that accuracy and I mean, for me, I really need to know that the card is correct and that I have it quickly without having to tune out, like Lloyd was saying, like thinking, or I need to count to seven in order to get somewhere. It's yeah. just one little tiny movement. And that's another thing that I like is that you really just have to move your finger to one position once. Once you're there, you'll have access to the card that you need. So there's not really fumbling it's going intuitive. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I want to talk about the tutorial, but before I do, a couple of very quick fire questions about the actual index. You can do Mercury folded cards and folded up cards with with, in, uh, with decks as well, right? Because that's been a question that a lot of people have asked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so and to, be, to be clear, it doesn't hold 52 cards that are folded up. But what we have is a lit... This... Index needs to be uh, decks needs to be practiced, right? I wouldn't say you could just get it and start practicing the first minute. Uh, start performing. The that first was going to be my follow up question, right. which is what's the learning curve for decks? Well, well, I'll I'll, I'll just say this to, to couple into it is that um, decks. If some if it says like the skill level, it, it's like requires a minimal but practice. Yeah, because I don't want to say this is self working and easy because you do have to get it down, and that's a good thing. Um, with the Mercury folding system, though, the Mercury folded card system, I would say, as long as you can do decks, that to actually take it from flat cards to folded cards, the little the little thing you have to do, I would say the skill level for that is beginner or less. Like, it's actually, like, it's stupidly easy. So that I'm comfortable saying is like extremely easy. So so if anyone's like, oh, so they're not folded, so I have to do something. That something is is less like I would I would literally. If you can do this, if you can do this, out. you can do this, you can do that, you can do it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally. It's literally. I would. Li I would honestly like no joke. I, I maybe for YouTube. My I'm a two year old. I I actually fully believe he could do the move. Like no one hundred percent no BS. It's like oh. ridiculous. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, how long would somebody expect? Forget about the folded cards for a second. How long would somebody expect to need to practice before they would feel comfortable taking this out into a real world situation and doing some of the stuff that we've seen you do on the trailer? I so that's this, yeah. So we taught we taught Bo Kramer on video on decks you can watch him learn it and he gets the card right perfectly each time i think after 30 minutes so he had never seen decks before it took him 30 minutes to learn it and he's able to pull the cards out perfectly now technically if he wants to perform the super easy routine he could do it right then and there he's going to be able to perform um the one under the phone with yeah. the card under the, 
we'll just leave it at that instantly, right? I will also mention that our editor, Wesley, he he was the one that edited the Dex instructions. So thank you so much if you're watching. Um, but during the times where he was exporting or doing- He's not little... a magician, never had any magic experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, his first magic, his first magic experience or exposure to magic is literally here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the first projects he ever worked on. And he actually asked us, he said, hey, I really love the instructions. Can I actually get one? I want to learn it. So, so we gave him one. We went to the warehouse. We picked one up for him. And in less than three days, he shows up at my door and he's like, all right, name a card. I named 10 cards in a row. He got them perfectly right in less than five seconds each. No mistakes. So somebody wow. with no magic experience, practicing here and there, I asked him, he said, oh, I would take like five minutes, 20 minutes if something was exporting, and then just kind of go through the cards. It took him four days to proficiently take the cards out. So, uh, and that's, not coming from a magician that's coming from a 100 percent lay person that's amazing. But i just say with the bow thing the video of, of have teaching bow is uncut um yeah. because what we wanted to do was to show because bow works for murphy's but he, they were in rancho together and bow hadn't had a dex at all um so what we wanted to show was if it took bow 10 hours or 10 minutes we wanted to show how long it took someone with zero skill level and with dex um, to, to the point how long it would take to get them to they just nailing it over and over and over again. Um, so we just it was it was recorded and it could have been 90 minutes, it could have been two hours, but I think I think the full video is 38 minutes because at the half an hour mark is when he starts to find his flow and he's like it's like second nature then. Um, but there was a reason for that, which is to show everyone, like say someone's on there um and they're just not quite getting it. So they can kind of watch along and be like, oh, do you know what? Like, yeah, that I, you know, if I thought that was going to take me three minutes to get down this video, this, you know, this guy's half an hour. So kind of give people a bit of um to set a baseline for people, uh, the average thing. The cool thing is, because it's a unique system, everyone is a beginner. Everyone, mm -hmm. even if you had an experience with other indexes, really you're all starting at the same level. So it's hard to say what skill level. Uh, this is suited for because you're all learning it together. But yeah, we wanted to include something like that in there just to show people the full learning process. And someone might get it quicker and be like, oh, wow, I thought I was taking my time. And turns out I got it quicker than Bo. And some people might be like, oh, okay, well, I've got it. I was a little bit longer than Bo, but turns out it was about the same amount of time uh, as, it, as it generally takes to learn just to give them a bit of confidence. That's cool. Yeah. I also, we also did, um, I want to mention, we also did a, interactive practice section uh, and i want to say that it gets progressively harder right so when you start watching this is interactive section you'll just hear my voice naming cards out loud that's how you get used to it but later on not only do we have you pull the card out we also have you read the question on the screen because that's how you're going to be performing it that's why instead of just seeing the word written or the card we're saying it because that's how you're going to be hearing it when you're performing yeah. so some of the questions at first are going to be like is there a reason why you chose this card or you know things you would actually say during performance you get we your brain get... firing in different places whilst yeah. you autopilot yeah wow. yeah then we go into more complicated questions so we make the questions sound uh, using way more difficult language let's just say it more proper questions it then goes into now you have to answer questions in case a spectator will ask you questions so we we request that you actually answer those questions we then give you tongue twisters so that as you're taking the card out you're going through magic related tongue twisters and then there's a built-in little psychological thing that Lloyd came up with uh, you want to talk about that one that's almost like the little last bit yeah so like you go through all these stages and it basically is teaching you how to do decks whilst performing really because you're answering questions like you're having an interaction and then we do one little thing which is going to trick your brain literally going to trick your brain and I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this 
Have you ever seen that like black and white optical illusion where you stare at it, it looks like blotches and you stare at it for 30 seconds, then you look up and blink and you can see the photo, you can see an, an image of Einstein. And yeah. then you blink back and everything back to normal. It, yeah. I'm not going to say what it is because the method is unique to our teaching, but it can be applied to all your other magic once you learn what we're doing. But it's kind of like that. You kind of do something, you go harder, 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 and then it does something else. And it's like, and, and you're really like, oh, and suddenly we do something. And now you can do decks with, without wow. even thinking about it because you just, it, we trick the brain and it's a really interesting thing. And uh, it's like yeah, we're, hack, yeah. we're helping you hack your own brain. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. And so if you do that practice section from start to finish, you will be better than us with text, probably. Like it's, <laughs> it's, good. it's really cool. It's really, really interesting. We put so much work into making sure that that we stand behind this product 100 percent Like the, the weird thing is, there'll be some bad reviews out there. Um, because that's just the, the nature of the beast of the magic industry. But Dex does exactly what we're doing with it. Like we go out, we perform, we get the, yeah. the speed is the last thing that's important with Dex. But it's fast. The tricks say, speak for themselves. Like we stand behind this hundred percent and everyone that gets decks and, and follows like the practice sessions and watches to see somebody really learning it. It does exactly what it says on the proverbial tip, you know? Uh, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're, we're super proud of how much, like, I know it's a long tutorial and you know, the whole debate, I mean, it's long tutorials, but everything has a reason for being there. Every single thing has a reason for being in this tutorial. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, that's incredible. I want to talk more about the tutorial in a second. I've got two other questions about the actual product that I, I, I want to just quickly check with you. The first is, can you produce a four of a kind? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Because I'd never seen anything about that anywhere. Um, yeah, we, we teach also uh, uh, poker hand. You know yeah, how the, you, the, you get the, the little, well, this isn't it, but the little poker card yeah. that comes you can have somebody just think of one of those and this thing would be your crib to just take out you don't even have to remember where they are you just look which one it is that they have and that'll intuitively tell you where it is in decks so any poker hand called for you could also get four of a kind loaded into a blank deck there's millions of options wow that's great and next question two other questions this is this is a question I've never seen anyone raise. Um, I was speaking to Ryland about decks. Ry saw the trailer for decks and he's like, oh my God, he doesn't do card tricks. And he's like, I want to do this. This is amazing. I got <laughs> and I said, there might be an issue, dude. You're 10. Your pockets might not be big enough to hold that thing. Yeah. Is that an okay. issue for like a kid? I know, it, you know, there's a lot of kids getting into magic now. And, you know, rai has got a lot of friends at the YMC and I know in their group, they're, they're all talking about decks, decks, and decks. Is it an issue in terms of the size of the pocket that like a 10 year old might have that might cause an issue? Or it, it, would it be a case of buying like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, this question has already been answered by a kid reviewer. So his name oh, is... Brilliant. Blake, um, I Blake, don't. I met him at Magic Live. He is so switched on. What's this kid yes. is amazing. He's amazing. Yes. yes. Uh, so he uh, he's he's going to be big in this industry. I'm telling you. I, yes, yes, I can definitely see it. I totally see it. So we sent him a dex. He put a review out already, and he does mention that it does work in a lot of his uh, pants and shorts. He talks about it in his review, but he does say that. Maybe if you do have small pockets, it won't fit if you are a kid. But he says that it fits in a lot of them. And he actually, I know for a fact, he must have received it this weekend. And he does a performance. So he's already using it in his review show. Right. Um, so if you're interested, if you're a kid that wants to know, I recommend you go check out his his channel is BF Media Tainment Magic. Blake um, Alion or Aleon. Blake A L E O N G. Aleon. I didn't want. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but Blake. Yeah. Yes. Just search like Blake Dex review, and it'll probably yeah, pop up. It'll straight come up. It'll, it'll pop up. Yeah, 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 yeah. One other question about the the actual unit. Um, on the cafe, there's a couple of you know the, the negative lenses that are 
going on about the aces because in a lot of the presentations that you talk about you on the trailer you know openly you go hey don't name an ace everybody names yeah. aces name something else and i it's so easy to have an ace not named um and and alex alejandro's review he says hey um you know both uh, uh lloyd and javier choose not to have the aces named um, but you can have the aces in the actual uh, uh, decks if you want to. So my question is, can you produce the aces? And if you can, why do you guys choose not to? Okay, for me, I never like to give people the option of an ace, and I usually limit the queen of hearts, regardless of what I'm performing, because usually I get everybody names that card, and I don't really want that. I want it to be random. So... Whether I'm doing decks or something else, I usually will limit the ace because of the constant response like, oh, everybody names that. Oh, everybody names that. So to combat that, I've always resorted to that. Now, we do teach you how you can use uh, the aces with decks. It'll be with index. So you can use it with decks, but it's just a habit for me to say, don't name an ace. And I yeah. usually throw in oh and usually people say the queen of hearts but that's my reasoning and uh lloyd do you have a well, different well, well you just, uh, for symmetrical nature and depending on if you're left or right handed it kind of needed to be symmetrical so we designed it to hold perfectly or like the housing or the value housing was for uh 12 values so eight uh two three four five six seven eight nine ten jack queen king um and yeah i'm exactly the same as how i always limit the aces i hate nothing more than if someone like names an ace of spades uh with, with a different trick i like go with it and at the end they go well everyone says it. it's like oh what's the point you know yeah. so we did yeah. that but 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 we found like what we do is you literally just put the aces index and yeah. it works identical there's literally like zero difference to how it works uh depending on which way you want to put them in uh yeah we can do a, multiple ways it takes up this much extra space. This is four cards. It takes up the actual width of four aces, the extra space, unless we could like, it, yeah. crack them into powder. Um, but it, purely for design reasons and because we don't, we personally, like we said, this is the best index for us. We made our dream index and it's not going to be someone else's dream index. But there's no qualms. If you want the aces in there, we have to fully cover it. We teach it. We show you in depth how to do the aces. Like it, it really makes like, no little little to no difference um just again we set out to make the best index in the world for us <laughs> yeah so let's talk about the tutorial because two questions i've got well first of all i know that you guys are very passionate about the material on there multiple hours tons of routines I mean, I don't know what you guys are thinking of about doing long tutorials. You're obviously just padding it out. You wouldn't see me doing that. Um, <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> I want to know about the tutorial, but also I want to not challenge, but I want to ask you about something very specific, uh, Lloyd, because you've been going quite like you've been speaking to about decks for a while now. And one thing, one narrative that you've always stuck to is if I see somebody having somebody name a card, reaching into their pocket and pulling out that card, I'm going to go over and kill them because that's just like the worst use of the index ever. Can I ask you what? I mean, just on the surface, that's a pretty damn good trick, right? Hey, I've got a card in my pocket. Name a card. Seven of diamonds. Boom. There you go. There you go. I mean, on the surface, that's a pretty direct trick. So why is that so bad? And, and okay. what have we got going on on the tutorial that's so much better than that? It's it, if you if you were a lay person, a magician walks up to you and says, "Name a card," and you say seven of hearts," and you reach in your pocket, pull it out. You're not just going to be blown away, like Darren Brown talks about in his book, the uh, the the politeness. What's it called? The proxim politeness of proximity. Yeah, a nice spectator will guess to your face, but if they were to take a guess at how it worked, which they all do. There's only one guess they can have. You, got one. That you have all the cards in the pocket. That's the only guess they can have unless they're fools. Yeah. But the average spectator and above and below can only guess that you've got all the cards in your pocket. And that guess is completely correct. 
Yeah. So why you? What's the point of doing something where they know how it's done? Even if you disguise the method a little bit by palming the card out and pulling it from a different pocket, that is a hundred times better than them. It's just obvious. Even like I know I I'm the biggest proponent to say like the crosscut force is the best force in the world because it it's bulletproof. Even when they tested it in the Psychology of Magic book, they tra- they stress tested it by writing numbers on the back. And the people they tested it to still couldn't work out how it was done with numbers. I, I understand that like very direct tricks can still be fooling. But but with the crosscut force, there's ways that they trick their own brain. They can't think of any other method. They could only be, that can only be the method. There's no way of, of the only way you're getting away with this is by politeness. Yeah. It, 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 I, I, like if you went and did this and just like if you go on the street now tomorrow and perform that and say, how do you think it works? You know, got every card in your pocket or let me see inside your pocket. It's not example. It puts all the heat on the pocket. And that's the one thing you don't want to do with an index. The notion that any cards could be in there mm. should never be in their, in their mind. I remember well, I've married, been married to Kaylee for years now. Um, I didn't show her like stack decks. I didn't explain to her what a stack was uh, until like, about two years in. And the notion of a stack is so alien to a spectator, to a normal person, like even a magician's wife. And I was explained to that you can cut and complete it, but it's still in the same order. And to some really astute people, they can really instantly understand that. But to the average person, it's a really alien concept. And the same is it can be said for when there's something so left field in play. If they're shuffling a deck or they, they're holding on to a wallet or whatever it's going to be, the last thing on their mind, aside from being preoccupied, is that you're taking a card out of your pocket secretly. The worst thing you could do, it's like it's like it's like it's like being given a Ferrari engine and then using that Ferrari to drive three doors down to your neighbor's house to borrow sugar. You know, you've got this incredible, powerful device. It can do a thousand tricks. It can it can turn some of the best tricks of all time. And it's not just any this index. I mean any index, any index in the whole world. You could do miracles with it. Literally, you can t- take the invisible deck and make it gimmickless. You can do it so as an example, they keep the deck. Why on earth, of all the tricks, every single trick you could choose, it's the last one on the list of the most obvious one. Why on earth would you bother doing that? Aside from being lazy, it's just not fair in your audience. They've got the ability to experience something special using an index. And you're choosing to put all the heat on the pocket. And the only method they're going to have, unless they're being polite, is right. Come on, man. Just be better. So tell me very quickly, because I know you guys have got things to do. Tell me about the tutorial. This is what it's all led to. Like, you guys are so proud of the tutorial you're so proud of everything that's going on in there very briefly talk about the tutorial and what's going on i spoke so much javier i need to <laughs> <laughs> pull on you all right all right so we'll go with uh so basically we wanted everything to be in there so we went through the routines we were going to teach we came up with more while we were there together which is great um but we also wanted to teach all the slides. So anything that we did, we wanted somebody, if they don't know any magic at all whatsoever, we wanted them to be able to also be able to do it. So there's a slide section where you learn all the slides that we do, different switches, because you may have to do switches if you're using decks, um, different palms, different steels, how to cover uh, the hand coming out of your pocket. We even give you reasons or how to think about even going into your pocket, what mindset should you have? Um, Then we go into multiple routines using playing cards. We go over routines not using cards at all, Mercury card folded. We also have you think about decks almost like as your helper. So go through your magic drawer, see what other tricks you have, how can you pair it with. For instance, if you have quantum, pair it with decks, just absolutely mind-blowing he did it in the tutorial he did it in the quantum deck tutorial he had the early yeah, version the, quantum of decks. Deck. I, the original version of decks i used in the quantum deck tutorial yeah. as yeah. a as yeah. like one of the cleanest any cards at any numbers you'll ever see name, <laughs> yeah, a card, exactly. name a number job done boom there exactly yes so um we also tell you how not to use 
decks, um, using tarot cards, using envelopes with EDC, with angles. It just by the way, that that EDC thing is is the thing that I'm most excited about going out and gigging. That's just insane. Oh. Yeah. Let me explain to people what it is. Well, we so so the, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. I, I it's it's insane. You, you know, I saw I saw um, you know I saw saw Lloyd perform it. It's ridiculous. He literally hands some receipts. That you take out an envelope. There's some receipts in there. They think of an item off the receipts, and and you know you um, you put the receipts back in the envelope from their point of view. That's all that happens, and then you tell them the item they're thinking of. But then you say, well, what if I influenced you? And they look at the envelope that's been there the whole time and it's got the item that they thought of written on the back of the envelope. I mean, that's just ridiculous. This is all happier. And what you found out is that you can just, the index can be used like this. For, this is not spoiling it, I don't think, right? Because people yep. have found that you can easily put 30 business card size envelopes in decks. So you can take all your cards out, fill it full of 30 envelopes, and then use from there. When you use it with EDC, have you also figured out that you don't even need to work out what they're thinking of because they're in, in like a numeric order. You just work out the receipt position, you know, yeah. and then you just get it from decks. You can pick the same envelope that you switch out, and there's no you heat on the switch crib. ever because ah. there's no heat on the switch of all time because mm -hmm. they are literally looking at the receipts and thinking of what they're thinking. Guys, of. that's genius. Yeah, it's and the method. They, they I feel sorry for lay people because they can't. If they thought that you were working out what they had because of how many receipts were sent back and forth, well, then it's cancelled out by the envelope. But that envelope was in full view the entire time. So then that cancels out, well, well, he did make me think of it. Everything is like this infinity symbol, and it's just yeah. not the Titans itself. It's incredible. That's mad. That's mad. We have one really good trick on there, which we, we which I love personally. It's um, So we want to make sure that it was something for everyone because we didn't want to make every trip need need to have palming and this trick started off as a beginner trick and i think it's it's the trick that i'm like most excited to show people yeah um, yeah but it's 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 a trick where attention is brought to the pocket but for the right reasons and uh it's it kind of looks like this so um you can basically do a named card reveal or, or something but if you want it to be star signs or something else anywhere you want in the room right but with no palm in uh, the pocket is in use for the right reasons and there's no i ha i'm hesitant to say the word move or slight but, it, nah, but if you watch if you can turn the card over if exactly you can do this that's the that's the that's the move right yeah. that actually that is actually the move that is the, <laughs> literal, that is the literal move um yeah and it looks like this you say uh in my pocket i've made a prediction name any card so craig name any card Four diamonds. I pull out from my pocket, I put all the attention here, I pull out a blank card that says under my phone. Or stuck behind the clock or under your chair. Anyway. I yeah. say, that's my prediction. See? And then I lift up, I have you lift up my phone. Oh, before you do that, I say, would you be impressed if your card was under my phone? Yes. Like, yeah, amazing. Four diamonds. You lift up the phone and there's another blank card that says your card. <laughs> And then you turn it over, and on the back of the your card, your card card says four diamonds. Wow! No palming. I mean, no I don't know if you consider this a move. That's the move. That's the move, and it's clean as a whistle. But I, it was designed for beginners, but I actually prefer it as a as like one of the strongest routines on there. Wow. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite routines is the one uh, you did in your uh, secret society, Lloyd, with. Kaylee with the UV ink. Can you mention that one? Because that one is just insane. yeah. This is a no. This is, you put one card in your hand and you say, um, "I'm going to try and show you the difference between magic and a miracle." So, uh, name a number between one and fifty-two. Twelve. Well, so they. I open up my phone. Say on my list, I have, a, I have a list of playing cards. What playing card do you think is at position twelve, Craig? Uh, three of diamonds. We scroll to the list and it's wrong. At, at 12, which is the number you said, is the two of hearts. You turn over the card in your hand that you've been holding the entire time and it's the two of hearts exactly at position 12, which you guessed, which is pretty cool. So that's that's a magic trick. But the difference between that and a miracle is this. And you just bring out any 
UV keychain doesn't have to be Lux and like just a no normal UV pen light. They're 99 cents to buy off Amazon. And you shine on the face of the two hearts. And you say, what was the card that you thought it was? And on the face written in ink is the three of diamonds. <laughs> yeah. And everything makes sense. All the motivation by saying, oh, what card do you think it is? It gets, because it's something about having people name a card. Say I put a card here. I say, Craig, name a card. Now all the expectation is for that to be that card. So you sometimes don't want the surprise ending because like Joshua J talks about in his How Magicians Think book, like surprise is a big element of magic. You don't want to give away the surprise and it not be there or just not give away what the surprise is going to be. So it has, I think having a magical surprise element to your effects is always such an important thing and most people agree. So having them guess what it is, the guess be wrong, but then the trick be, oh, two of hearts. And then that guess come back around later on, like foreshadowing to be the surprise reveal. They don't even realize they've named a card that's important. Um, and it's also a one, you know, this decks, but it's a one card trick. So there's no extra deck. And sometimes, and what it is, is a one way force deck of two of hearts. And we've written every card on it. In fact, <laughs> the deck there. Um, and sometimes I, the first time I was going to do it, I was going to choose a, a two of hearts. And then I realized, why don't you go for, they might get lucky. So I put like a two of hearts with seven hearts written on it now. And sometimes you don't even need to do the switch. Yeah. Wow. The, the cool thing is about the switch, they turn over the two of hearts. No one's looking at you because the phone is on the table. So the attention's on their hand. Um, the trick's finished. So you just switch it at your own leisure. And it sounds to me. And because it's UV ink, that two of hearts is sat face up on the table. You can leave that 30 minutes if you really want to. Because the, the switched card is in full view and they don't even know. So it's like everything about it was like constructed to be like the ideal like massive powerhouse trick but with like absolute ease it sounds to me like this is a uh you know people are buying a multi-hour master class and they're getting a free index with it <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> 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 i like that <laughs> it yeah, reminds me of the cooked dinner that i had on sunday i had so much gravy my mom was like do you want do you want uh, some dinner with that gravy? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, no. everybody's raving about the tutorial. Everybody's raving about everything. You know, it's getting nothing but great reviews. My one question is, when a dealer's going to get it back in stock? You've been accused oh. on the Magic Cafe of, you know, you've, you've only bought out limited stock because you're trying to drive sales, which is ridiculous. In fact, this is one of the only Murphy's items that I can remember in history that hasn't even had a pre-order. I can't remember the last time there wasn't a pre-order. Normally, there's this gold, you know, I'm not giving away too much to say that Murphy's do the golden pipeline thing. So you have the, uh, you know, a key product drop. You have a week where people can pre-order it, where it's sent out to dealers and they get to ship it out. But this didn't happen. There was a launch day. There was a premiere, which has never happened before, as far as I can see with Murphy's, where there's a video premiered. You had this video premiered. People were getting excited about it. And then it was like, some dealers had it, some dealers didn't have, some big dealers I was surprised didn't have, but some had it, some didn't. And and now, you know, I think I was speaking to Pete Zanardi, he sold out in zip point three seconds, I think. Uh, like, what you know, I know that some dealers still have some, but not for long. Like, what, what, when is it coming back in stock? And what do you say to people that said you tried to drive sales by uh, limiting stock? Uh so let's start with how they're made. They're technically, each one is handmade and it's really specific how they need to be made. And in fact, manufacturing said they couldn't get them made after we sent them the instructions of how to do them. So we had to make them up further detailed instructions, specifically where to put their fingers, how to do everything they needed to do to build it and then they were able to make it. So we had to make a decision uh, with how many units and how much time it was going to take. And uh, because we had taken so long to bring decks out, we chose a pretty good amount, but it seems like it wasn't, I guess, as much as we were expecting. Like we weren't expecting it to go out that much. And so we're technically getting more made it's gonna take two months for them to make the additional units and then another month for them to come. I uh, think if if anybody thinks that it's 
a conspiracy that we didn't make enough to drive demand. I I'll tell you this, I've been in the magic industry side of things for a decade. In in three months from now, I would bet pretty good money on the product hype dying down, which means that if we made, you know, 50,000 more units, they wouldn't sell out as fast as they are now, which we would rather have had those 50,000. Now, we were pretty confident that this was going to do well because of the amount of the buzz online. You can just look at the numbers. They were off the charts. Like, we were pretty confident. Um, so if there's any conspiracy theories that we limited stock, that's the worst business decision in history since Elon Musk bought Twitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that. Oh man. So 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 they are gonna come back in stock at some point, but it's gonna be more towards Christmas. We're in September yeah. now. So we're looking we're looking around about Christmas. That's great. I mean, I have one other question, one final question. We spent the last hour chatting about decks. I'm super excited. Um, I'm still using my old one. I, I can't wait to get the new one and review it. I'm gonna be very excited. But is it gonna be a biased review or is it gonna be honest? Oh, I'm going to try and be as unbiased as I can, despite the fact that I don't like you, Lloyd. I, I do like, I, you know, I do like, I do like have. So, you know, we'll, it, balances out, it balances out. Uh, I'll, 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 try, I'll try my hardest not to be biased. I'm the devil. He's the angel. Exactly. But my question is, you guys have struck lightning with decks. Like I said at the beginning, fastest selling trick in the entire history of Murphy's broken sales records there's big dealers that haven't even carried it because it sold out so quickly my question is you guys collaborating on another product because it seems like you guys have hit gold if i was mark murphy i'd just be like moving half to wales shoving you guys <laughs> in a room together and saying that. right okay make it happen like what 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 does the future hold between you two? Because it's the first product you've ever worked on officially. I know that you you know you had a bunch of routines on on Javier's Nexus project and Javier's jumped on your project, but this is the first one that you kind of co-headline. So, is there going to be other stuff coming from from you two? I mean, for, I'm excited. I can't wait. We were talking about it a couple of days ago. Kind of like, all right, what's next? Let's do, let's do something else. It doesn't matter what it is. Let's just. We'll make we it already better. have a few ideas. I think we actually, <laughs> you know, just just as a side, did we talk about um, the lightning thing on the beach earlier? Did we talk about this? One of the crazy things uh, that happened was that the whole theme of Dex is lightning, lightning fast or whatever. And the very last thing we filmed on the very last day of the project, on the very last minute of shooting, was the B-roll on Dania Beach in Miami, uh, which is where Hav got engaged. And as we, was, as we were literally finishing up the final shot of this epic sort of odyssey of li literally, uh, well, like the first time it was shown was a year ago. And that was after the first manufacturing prototype. So it was at least two years. Um, as we finished the first batch of recording, lightning struck in the background. And we actually got it in the trailer. It's the last two shots of us in the trailer is lightning behind us in the skies. I and it was amazing. The trailer. I saw that. And I was like, epic. oh. And as we were walking off the beach, we were like, that. No, we walk off the beach like, what's the next project we're going to work on? <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. Well, I cannot wait to see what you guys have got coming out next because I know it's going to be I know it's going to be absolutely brilliant. But I want to say thank you so much for coming on the channel. You guys rock. You absolutely do. And you know, if people that are watching this, if you see it available somewhere, go buy it because like these guys said, it's going to be out of stock for a little while before it comes back in. But that's only a testament to, you know, the time and effort that you've put into making this and and the routine. You could have half-assed it. You could have half-assed it. You could have put the old decks out. You could have put half an hour tutorial out with, hey, this is how you use it. Here's a trick. Thanks very much. Give me the money. And people would have bought it. With your names on it, people would have bought it. But the fact that you've gone to the e effort that you've gone through, restarting the project again, flying over to Miami, putting hours and hours of content together, going the extra mile, it, it just shows how much of a passion project this was for both of you. So congratulations. Not on just us. Andrew Niner, Jake Keen, there's a bunch of collaborators. Uh, like there's a, That's why one of the extra, vo one of the volumes is collaborations, just to say, this this is a this is not you know we can't take all the credit right man like this is a yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. effort yeah it's amazing. Mm -hmm.
It's amazing. Yeah, and also, we need to give a huge shout out to George for letting us <laughs> make all the decisions that we took because he pretty much said, yeah, if you think that's the right move, go ahead. So huge shout out. Yeah, massive. I mean, like for me, uh, like I've been around the block. I, I, I've done it, been there, done that on the t-shirt. This is the first time in my life I've ever been allowed to scrap a product and wait an extra year just to get it perfect. Normally it's rush, 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 whatever the quality is, get it out. Not here. Like this is, and this is why we are, with yeah. the least egotistical terms, why it's breaking records and people are giving it the beautiful reviews that they are because Murphy's George just allowed us the freedom to really put our hearts and souls into something without being under a time constraint. It's, yeah. it's paid off. And it's, it's a risky decision to make because obviously as a business, you know, and Murphy's is a business at the end of the day, taking that approach of, you know, we're going to scrap it and start again. It's a, it's a risky business decision. Well, hang on a minute. That's going to cost us money. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, you guys love magic, but you know, Murphy's are wanting to make a profit. They're a business. That's, perfectly okay to do that and the fact that you've been able to take that risk and still make a profit is amazing um and i bet you mark murphy's very happy do you remember that old uh cartoon duck tales and that guy scrooge mcduck that used to like yeah i i imagine that we've got a scrooge mcduck situation going on in murphy's right now there's a room somewhere in head office and it's just filled with money and mark murphy is just swimming <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what I'm so, Honestly, if there is, I'm pretty sure it's just being immediately transferred to the incredible people that hand assemble decks just to make more, just like everything we've got, make as many units as we as as humanly possible. So I don't think that's the case. I think he's just going, we need more because everyone <laughs> wants more. <laughs> That's amazing. Guys, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I can't wait to see what's next. Uh, congratulations on the success of Dex. And also, if people are watching this, I'm sure you already know that, but if you don't uh, and you love magic, you need to subscribe to both Lloyd and Hab's YouTube channel. They're two of the best YouTubers on the uh, you know, in on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Go check out Lloyd's stuff. Go check out Javier's stuff. I'll put links down below uh, because they're you both... You know who the best YouTuber is, though? It's Craig. And do you know who voted for that? Craig. I see the video. He voted himself the best job. I did. Of course I did. I'm going to vote myself number one. Nobody's better than me. Go the size of the planet. Guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. No problem. Thanks very thank much. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Guys, on behalf of Lloyd and Javier, thanks very much for joining me here on Magic TV. Leave a comment down below. I know the guys are going to see it. And also, don't forget, if you see decks available somewhere, beg, borrow, steal a copy of it. Because if you don't, you're going to be waiting until December. It's going to be a very long wait. And it is incredible. Look for a review coming on my channel soon. Uh, but one more time, Lloyd, have thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Guys, I'll see you again soon, right here on Magic TV. Mm -hmm.